Welcome to Chaos Culture Radio, and I want to thank you for tuning in. We create these topics every day, and we wanted to just bring something different. Today, I want to talk about something important that I think a lot of people don't talk about. And I made this especially, um, this was just crested, um, particularly for black women, women who we love dearly, women who we marry and cherish, mothers, sisters, daughters. And I hope this can give some insight on maybe how to approach things a little bit differently. So what I'm going to deep dive into is a topic that affects many black women in the community today. And it hasn't been talked about enough. And I want to ask y'all a question um, for every woman who might be able to watch this. And please share this with your daughters, your aunties, your grandmothers who might still be actively dating because this is important. The thing is, um, do you constantly feel pressure, um, ladies, by everything or to everyone at all times? Today, I want to break down the myth of the strong black woman and how it could impact our relationships. Um, and I want you to look at it from this because we've been hearing this for so long, the strong, strong black woman ideology. And yes, the black woman is strong due to the impairing um, things that are going on in our community where they have to be the forefront in certain aspects. And sometimes in certain communities, the community is held on a black of women. You know what I mean? Especially with single motherhood and the lack of male presence in there. But I want to approach this from a point to understand this and why is it affecting for women to obtain a husband, a life partner, in a sense? And if it's even sabotaging that idea for a lot of you ladies who are independent, who are in school, who are getting advanced degrees or running companies and businesses. And to try to understand why maybe people may be intimidated by it, especially black men, or why the narrative might promote a wrong image when it should be something positive or being strong should be something beautiful. In every community, there's always the woman as the strong woman in their community, but particularly ours, it's honed in and focused and talked about it enough to the point where it's promoted negatively. You know, I mean, you have strong Hispanic women, strong Indian women, strong Chinese women, and a lot of these women are pillars in their community even in the diaspora, um, Haitians, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, all these women, which I share a uh, womanhood of, are all strong in their own right, and their communities are holding the back, especially in impoverished neighborhoods. So I want to come from this point. Many of us have been raised to embrace the idea of the strong black woman, even me. You know what I mean? But I, I grew up in a two-parent household, but visibly I can see my mother was the backbone of it. And my father glued it together. He went to work every day, paid the bills. My mother took care of us. You know what I mean? Majority of our education I learned from my mother. So, you know what I mean? They are our first responders. Our first level of intimacy as far as showing us empathy and how to love one another. So when we see the strong black woman ideology, we see it in our mothers, our grandmothers, and our aunts. Women who have never showed weakness. And let's be honest, black women never show weakness out in public, but maybe in home when they break down amongst family members and their partners. Especially y'all, a lot of y'all never ask for help. You know what I mean? Anyways, you handle everything on your own. Why your strength is admired? Have we stopped and asked whether carrying that weight on the world on your shoulders is affecting how we connect with potential partners. I want to go into this because y'all do hold a lot of on your world. And I know, especially black men don't make you feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable or maybe the world don't to show us any sign of weakness. Cause you might feel that we might take advantage of that. And I want to say that that's not all the case in some sense points it is you know what i mean but that's where the sermon comes in understanding the person who you're showing your weakness to or your vulnerability or trying to be meek 
First, I want to define what it means to be a strong black woman. I'm not a woman, so I really can't connect with that. But I have firsthand understanding compared from any other men from other races because I'm in your community. Um, it's an idea that paints the black woman as being unbreakable, self-reliant, resilient in the face of adversities. Don't get me wrong now. There's nothing wrong with being strong. But there's a problem that arises when strength becomes a necessity, a requirement to survive instead of a choice. And women should have a choice. A lot of y'all should be able to rest in your femininity, but I know that sometimes you can't. You feel what I'm trying to say? It's the burden you carry um, in being our community. So I'm going to talk about resilience versus the burden of strength. Many black women have been socialized to prioritize survival over vulnerability. Oh, my God. I heard that before, and I, I was so stunned by it. And um, to even say this, I wish I had this conversation with a woman face-to-face -to, -face to be able, but just to hone in on that. And this can bleed into romantic relationships. It might be difficult to let somebody else in, which I know is difficult for y'all, to trust somebody enough to depend on them or to show your softness. See how does it affect your dating? And I know sometimes a lot of y'all have it turned on and, and unable to turn it off because you've been actively like this for so long. And some of y'all had no choice to, especially if you're in a very hostile environment. You know what I mean? Where the men are, they are very hostile and not engaging in a way where you could rest in your femininity of being soft. You know what I mean? So I want y'all to think about it. And if you're always expecting to be strong, when do you get a chance to relax? I noticed that within my sisters, my mom, my aunt, and even friends who I know. I always notice they always feel like they have to be on the go. And some of them are in relationships where they can't show no weakness or no signs of that, especially in the diaspora where things are a little bit more difficult and poverty is the main focus and you, know, you have to worry about eating and protecting the children. When do you have a time to relax? When do you have a time to say, I'm going to relax now? And a lot of y'all find refuge in church, sisterhood, um, groups, clubs, or traveling. Maybe the only time you're able to take a step back. Now, black women who embody the myth end up playing a role of a caretaker, a protector, and a problem solver in their romantic relationships. And I know that's been a con a contempt, a contentious that we a lot of women talk about. They don't want to be these things. And I'm wondering, um, can you able to turn it off? Or since you've been turned on so much, does that mean you attract a weaker vessel to you? Instead of getting somebody who is as strong as you or if not stronger, so you can be weak for them. Unfortunately, um, I notice in these type of women, these can lead to an imbalance where their um, emotional needs aren't met. And I think a lot of women can attest to this. A lot of your emotional needs are not met. And, and I wonder if you can answer this for me. Has it been something of a hindrance or a problem? To be able to not to um, get some things that you might need to be addressed emotionally, and you never can. Now, I take a deep breath and say, um, these things might cause partners to assume you don't need help. Especially a man who's designed or instructed to be strong when he meets somebody that's maybe stronger or if not um, on autopilot, they might assume like, hey, she doesn't need me. And this is why men tend to go for weaker vessels. A woman who seems like to be needy. And you heard the Captain Savo H. And sometimes men will want to deal with somebody who's not in a better financial position or who's in the worse position. Because in a sense, some of us men do feel like we need to be needed, even though we don't meet up to certain measures. If we have a little bit more than somebody and able to provide something, it gives us something of value. And I think I don't know if women understand that. And, you know what I mean? and then I know the argument could be that, hey, won't you just 
raise yourself up to that level. And we're trying. We are trying. Um, and you, you understand our conditions as well. You're in it with us. And some might advance more than others. You know what I mean? And some might be faster than others. And then a lot of y'all are accommodating to be like, hey, don't get me wrong, I'm going to work with you in this. But even in those instances, you still have to maybe play a role. Our dynamic as men and women has never changed. It's been like this for thousands of years. You know what I mean? It's just that technology plays a part. The shifting of the culture plays a part. We're not the same people we was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 2000s, 2010s. Now we're in the 2020s. And relationship and the dynamics of relationships are so different now. It's so different now. It's interlocked in with so many things that hasn't been with us in the 80s and the 90s. Prior from this, remember, you used to have to go um, go to a girl's house and, you know what I mean, nine out of ten times you meet their parents and talk to them. Now we're in the house and we're already getting it on. So that's the thing. But I also want to go back. Sometimes I might lean into a tent. Now, when your partner might assume you don't need help or support, even love in that way, of others, the result might end up feeling isolated, exhausted, or emotionally disconnected from your partner. How many of you watching this have felt that before? Um, where you could be so strong that you do feel disconnected to the person. And you know what I mean? And sometimes he doesn't understand what you need. You already leading the charge and he feels like, okay, let me just take a step back and let you handle everything. And I know you want him to pick up on what's going on. But a lot of us are not mind readers. We're not emotionally aware of things like that, especially men. Sometimes we close that part of us off. And um, I just want y'all ladies to understand that. Help us understand. And I can be at firsthand experience where I don't understand at times where women are coming from, especially somebody who is strong and independent and who has been paying her own bills and leading her own life. You know I me, mean? there's certain nuances about you that I will never understand. Just help me to understand so I can accommodate you and maybe work a little bit harder to try to get to the point where I can feel your emotional needs. And a lot of men are like that. And sometimes a lot of this just needs to be a conversation with the right person. With the right person. So I want to ask you this question. How do we change? How do we change? What's the first step of recognizing that the strength isn't your only value? It's respected, but it's not your only value. Yes, you're strong. You're a strong black woman. But we also deserving of your softness, love, care, and emotional support. Um, and you always hear this. A man wants a woman to be his peace. And for you to be peace, softness, love, and caring, emotion, and support play a big pivotal part, even in a hostile environment, the ghetto, the trenches, at what me if I say, you can calm a man down quickly when you're soft to the right person. And I'm always saying that. It is okay for you ladies to ask for help. You need to ask for help. I don't want you to always think that you can do this by yourself. It's impossible. We all need each other, man and woman, especially in our community. And I don't want you to feel like you can ask for help, but you got to ask from the right person. And situation awareness and discernment plays a part in understanding who you can ask for help because somebody could take advantage. It's just the same way nice guys get ran all over thinking that everybody is going to appreciate them being genuine. Just like, and I know being genuine in our community can be taken a sign of weakness. So we put up our guards. And I know a lot of y'all don't feel safe around us. Hopefully we can change the narrative on that. Because not all of us are here to hurt you. And the ones who are here to hurt you, we're going to take them out of our community and put them where they need to go. I want you ladies to know it is okay to lean on somebody, especially a man. It is okay to be vulnerable. I think it's needed. I think that 
um, a lot that plays into mental health. And I know um, trauma and tragedy and adversity plays a lot into why we're not vulnerable and not being able to be comfortable and to be in soft and to be weak and to let your guard down and to cry, especially on women. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they say play P and get F. And that's not always the case. But I also want you ladies to know, man, vulnerable, being vulnerable is a strength too. Just ask your therapist. Being vulnerable is a strength. Vulnerability doesn't mean you're weak. In fact, one of the strongest things you can do in a relationship is showing your true self, your fears, your emotions. Um, that's how deeper connection are formed. And, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us men who truly love and want to be in relationship, showing us that will let us know they show you the human side about it. But acting like you don't care or being very laissez-faire about it will make us say that, okay, she's strong enough to not need me. I could just walk away. And it's, it, it, it's not wrong to be scared and to show your emotions. And if somebody can't accept it, then they're not meant to be with you. They're not. Um, you know what I mean? Being scared of the future, being scared of getting pregnant, being scared of certain things. And these are things that you need to express to men. Even in the beginning, some men are not going to be receptive of it. And this, those are not the ones that's supposed to be your husband or you're supposed to connect with. And those who are, will gladly understand where you're coming from, be able to have an engaging conversation and be like, hey, you want to know something? I don't understand, but I get where you're coming from. And let's talk about this more so I can understand you understand, understand you a little bit more. I want to tell something, and I know this might not sound correctly and women might get mad, but I want you ladies to break free from the strong black woman myth. I want you. Y'all are more than just being strong black women. That doesn't have to be said. It's already understood. You can see the amount of kids who strive for success for their mothers or men who do the utmost to please their wives, their grandmothers, their sisters and all that. That has that doesn't have to be talked about. So I want you to break away from that man in, in your dating life. Um, it's about learning to finding a balance, to be honest. I want you ladies to allow yourself to be taken care of. Even if it feels foreign and uncomfortable. I know it does. A lot of y'all don't like to take money from them. A lot of y'all might think there's an ulterior motive when a man does something nice. I know it's uncomfortable at first. You know what I mean? Healthy, healthy relationships thrive on reciprocity. And, you know, if you don't know where reciprocity, you need to go look it up in the dictionary. My bad. But it's doing one for one another. I think black women deserve someone who can meet their emotional needs just as much as you meet their needs. Just as much as you play a rock, we want you to play a rock for us and let us allow us to be your rock at your time of week. At your time of emotional need. Be clear with your partner about what you need. Don't be afraid to express your emotional needs. Even if you've been taught to bottle them up. And a lot of us are. Especially men. This is why men don't like to talk about their feelings. And a lot of women don't. And that's where we understand each other. Because we feel like we don't have time to be depressed. We don't have time to express ourselves. Because the world told us to bottom it up, bottle it up and get over it and move along and told us to be these get money people or strive for perfection. Or let me go get this bag or this Benz or this big house. All that are empty. None of those matter when you don't have nobody to share with or a partner that you can enjoy that with. I'm going to tell you something. Um, the right partner will appreciate your honesty and be willing to support you in any endeavor. So I know I went on for uh, quite some time. This is a 20-minute video, but it's a serious topic. 
And um, so I want to ask y'all this before I go. So what do you think is a strong black woman myth? Is it affecting your dating life? Have you feel pressured to always be strong? Let me know in the comments below. I want to talk about it. I think this is important. Um, I feel it's my duty to address certain things that I know people don't want to talk about it. And they might negatively talk about it. And we see this all around in this space and nobody wants to understand that. So, But I want to come in from a different perspective. And if you find this video helpful, make sure you share it, subscribe, like, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll never miss an upload. It's Mr. Wonderful, Prince Hakeem. One third of the podcast of Chaos Culture Radio. I want to thank you for joining me, okay? I want y'all to have a wonderful day.